Alright, the pine tomb, the bargain, the bargain is um finding and fixing errors in program code. Uh, Next one, state of which of the following can be used to create maintainable code. Indentation will separate different control structures, or you could say um differentiate section of the code. Comments will give us um developers insight into what is happening. Descriptive variable name. Descriptive variable name will of a developer inside about what variable is about. I say what about the uh, variable. Alright, write a set of C programs defense that allow a user to enter timings for traffic lights until all are entered. The all entered values are valid, sorry, timing values are to be entered for the number of seconds. The light is red, green and orange. Uh -huh. So we have all these times to collect red time, green time, and orange time. So the rules for enter timings are as follows. Red time must not be less than the sum of orange time. Orange time must be less than that. Green time must be greater than the form of the color orange. If timings are valid, the program should also timings are valid and exit. If timings are not valid, the program should also invalid timings. Please re enter and accept the new set of time. Okay, there is no loop here. No, yes, there is a graphic light until all entered values are valid. So we are actually doing it over. Okay, I start in the cool. So Alright, so we have our so we are create variables. We should create variables like in um valid. No, sorry, we are doing red time, green time, or time. Red time equals to zero, green time equals to zero, orange time equals to zero. All of those initialize to zero and then I want valid. Valid will be equal to zero. Yeah. Um okay, so now we're going to start the loop. Say um set valid as one. Valid becomes zero. So we say while valid is not equal to one. We ask the user for the three numbers. Enter, enter value for red, orange, and no, red, green, and orange. For red, green, and orange. Kind of percent, percent, percent. The comma, each one of them will be in individually. So red time in the order that we put red time, green time, and time, green time, and orange. Alright, so after we scan all of them, we now have to do the conditions that we want to check. So we want to say if condition number one, red time must not be less than the sum of green time and orange time. If red time is greater than I'll do the I'll do the wrong first. Right? So if red time is less than the sum of green time and orange time, red time is less than the sum of orange time. Or you know, I can't write all my bad words too slash. Or what's the next condition? Orange time is less than five seconds less than five or last one green time is greater than four multiplied by orange time green time is greater than four multiplied by orange time right so um all right, uh, all right so i put each one in brackets because i don't know it's just be better to have all of them brackets at all you know which one is the condition so if the condition is true if it is true that all of those conditions like those conditions are any one of those conditions are met meaning that it's either this this or this that means it's invalid so we'll put um invalid timing and that's invalid timing so we can invalid timing we re-enter and then and then we ask them to enter it again yeah so we'll do this kind of again and so we we'll do the percent d percent d percent e and pretty red time i should drop you over that line like you know loud but i'm not actually taking this this whole line here do nope not all there correct so we scan back everything and we set valid to zero we could just we could leave it just so because valid will always be zero valid never change but valid will change it okay that will change then we have the else uh, valid is equal to one yep and uh, once the valid is equal to one, then we will know the loop will have to stop. Yeah, that is all the space that they give us. Wow. Well, yeah. I'll just put one clearly bracket here to close off that. And I'll next clearly bracket here to close off that. Alright, good. Yeah, that should solve that problem there. That's pretty straightforward. Nothing special. I'm gonna give you a little bit of lines to, to write out over there. Alright, consider the following code segments, which is that identify three syntax errors in the segments. 
Alright, so yeah, syntax errors and this is here. Syntax errors. We have a uh, comma missing there. We are missing the i less than or equal to three there. Um, we also missing a comma here, and we missing the quotation marks here. So whichever one, um, so we can say in i comma j. And I don't know, you know, if I had to put, put like in brackets or something, and like comma was missing, and then i is less than or equal to three. Uh, I was missing. Then print out send comma G. And we print comma was missing. Um, and then we have print backslash N. Going to print the quotation. Quotations we were missing. Right. Write the expected output of the program after the syntax errors have been corrected. The expected output you should get um one coming from the first line and then one two coming from the second line because what will happen here is this thing is going to I and J will I will start at one here and this will be less than or equal to three so that's counting from one to two to three right so as you go it's trying to stop at three so when you have a next for loop inside now that will go from one to what whatever value of I is the first value of I will be one so it will say four J is one to one and so it will the first value that I get print out will be J is one because this loop will only go one time then the loop will go up up again and I will go to two it'll be two to three right it'll be two out of three sorry so then it'll be like j is equal to one and j is less than less than two so therefore you'll print one and two because this loop will get to run twice and then um and then all will happen is the loop will go back up now and i will become three but because three is equal to three the for loop will now stop because this is no longer a valid condition because the only number that's less than or equal to three is two three wouldn't count this um, bit so therefore the loop wouldn't run inside here so you'll only get a one and two printed but that's why you get one then one right so, so that's this question next question briefly describe the characteristics of each of the following programming languages um declarator i don't need to write back the word now here yeah. so focusing on the what and the how the on fan uh, right procedural is a uh, focusing on step by step instruction uh, and repetition of it. and of course if you give an example like example would be a uh, bank calculation and declarative would be like example ai scripting um scripting would be used to automate small tasks um, that do not need to be compiled rather interpreted next one will be it two reasons why using modular code is considered good for Programming factor easy to follow stages of the program or make changes. Debugging. Debugging is easier because um, errors and isolated to specific function. Alright, good. What is a function prototype? And see a description of a function giving data type, name, and expected um, input. Uh, write a function named the calc total that accepts two integer argument and return to sum of the first argument added to the okay so return to sum so it's an integer in out of no, 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 this but that should be bracket so integer argument so in a and a. and then we are going to see what we want to do return to sum we are keep a variable in um, and sum is equal to you can do all that in one liner but i usually separate it just for people to understand the variable was created then you're using the variable but you could do the declaration and the um store any value one time if you want in sum is equal to the first argument added to 20 plus a 20 percent increase of the second all right so that'll be sum is equal to a v and then we return sum that was pretty straightforward there okay. and then the last question is this one about the core right, so the worst plenty space here because we have to write a, lot. a local code the system is implementing a file access program for several cases the objective of the system is to allow the recording of specific information for reporting and a summary of recording information for items of information per case are recorded and namely the name of the company right? Right, the law suffered the name of the law. Right, port fees attack a 20% tax, so we need to remember that. All names consist of a first name and a last name. The final line of the file consists of a hashtag for the um, claimant's name, as this here. And a sample of the file is going to be noted that if the case is true, about the loss and fees are both set to zero. Right, so we want to write a function that loops through the file and reads the law suffered and court fees for each record. So it's a function. What does it return? Does it return anything? Oops, so we are void function void calc 
file with um, it's not receiving anything nope not receiving anything so we'll just start with declaring the file so um file that in equals f open f open is hold on one second f open file in f open is the name of the file to give us an empty file nope. all right so we'll input a txt and we'll do this in read mode all right so once we start to read what we're reading first we're reading our first name and surname then uh and then we're reading the next person name and then 20. so this is the name of the complainant that's the first two things and then the law suffered and then the name of the accused and the court so this is complainant law this is the accused and this is the court fee yes yeah you lose marks because you need to read the whole name first and last thing yeah you lose one mark but i mean it wouldn't break the bank but it could break the bank because it's one mark right okay so what we have to do is we have to now check right so now we could create all the variables that we need once you open the file we could create a and 25 that's complainant first name complainant s and complainant surname then i'll add in the characters i'll be like a f n accuser first name and then accuser surname right, that should be on my string yeah and then i have in no these things could be um percentages so i should put them as float, float law and i'll set them to zero loss equal to zero and court fee is equal to zero um, and then we'll have um i'll create i'll, I'll calculate the total too yeah we'll keep total set that to zero also i guess that's all i need so far yeah. all right good. so i have all my variables created so now i'm going to check to see what is going to stop the file the final line of the file contains a hashtag for the complainant's name so i can't use while not end of file i had to check for a hashtag so i should scan the first name for yep, the first string so i'll do f scanner f scanner in and i'm scanning the p f and I'll put percent f percent f and then run cfn good now i want to check to see if that cfn oh it's a string so i'll use string compare strcmp well this is a function so it didn't ask for the whole program so we just had to assume that string compare is accepted if string compare um cfn and um quotation hashtag um, is not equal to zero yeah. so if it's not equal if, it, if, it's, e if it's not equal to one sorry if, if you compare them and it's not true that they are the same if it's not equal to one what do you want to do no it's not equal to zero because it's return zero if it's if they equal yeah, right. right. so if they if it's not equal to zero that means they are not the same and uh, what we want to do now is continue reading your self stuff so i do an f scanner in and i read in the percent f and the sn after read the customer surname f scanner f again in and i read in the um loss that'll be a percent f and loss then i do the f scanner f again in and i'm reading the, the name of the a F N A first name and then F scan F again in percent F read in the and accuse surname. Right, so I have everything that I need. No, I'd read the um I have to read the C F now, the court fee. F scan F again in and I read in and uh, and the C F. So I'll be caught. Okay, now I could do my math. And the maths is crazy law suffered on cost fee, then prints the total cost payable by each of the accused person. So let me go back. The law suffered. You need the name of the complainant. The law suffered the name of the accused and the court. And the court fees are track at 20% time. There's loss plus plus court fee. It seems like it's loss plus. Um, oh, I use any cal total functions. Yeah, I use any cal total function that we did up here. Okay, so I just send any two numbers. Right, okay. So I just going to create a variable called loss no, total. And I use in cal um total and i'm sending in um law and the so when i send those two things in now i'll get back the total and i'll print it out so it's for each line i have to print it out right and print the total cost payable by each of the accused persons here so that's each person so let's print up here print f total e colon percent f and i put in comma total and then this if now could close off nope i have to scan the first name again before i could close off because if i do scan on the first name i wouldn't know if i got the um the hashtag or not so i have to scan over the first name just like i did here yeah, yeah. Uh, 
of the Lord will accept it. Right, so after I scan that now, then I could close it and then I could close the function. Um, no, before I close the function, I'll close the file. I'll put F close, F close the input file. Right, that is it. That is it. Yeah. Look out total, open the file in read mode. Where all the variables are need. Well, I could declare the variables before the file or after. Doesn't matter. So I scan in the file to check to see if there is a. Uh, so if uh, we scan and then we close, yep.